Welcome everyone to another mail time. We actually got another SGI machine, an Origin 200. I did not expect to get this anytime soon. When I gave away one of this PA risk, the receiver was so nice to offer he has an Origin 200 to spare. And of course with all this SGI octanes going on there, I thought it's really nice to have. And this hard drive trays here are also compatible with the Octane. Remember with the other mail time pickup video of the second Octane, I said that gentleman also thought he has an Origin 200 when in fact he had an Octane, which was of course also nice. But with that Origin 200 I was already hoping for this hard drive tray. So although each system has no hard drive tray, I talk so much about these trays because they are so hard to get and I don't really want to spend 80 euro for a hard drive tray for the systems. But slightly difficult to get in and out there with this dust, especially the first slot there was hard to get in there. So let's take a look. So architecturally this is similar to the Octane. SGI lists this as IP27, the Octane as IP30 I think. And so this one does not have graphic built in and it has there uh, some crailing for some massive non-unified memory architecture connections in supercomputers of course PS2, Ethernet, serial ports you name it, power, hard power switch and unlike the Octane some PCI slots which are also nice to have that I can plug in regular PC cards like some old fashioned graphic card or so so let's remove some of this case and take a look inside also, unfortunately, this case is slightly broken, but that's what it is when you get things for free. Some skin pieces are missing there in the front, so and also so this side piece here came off just covering the bare metal case there, so you don't need to open that side. A little bit of a first disassembly fail, but that's what it is, documenting the things on YouTube. So finally with this side we see some interesting things, the PCI slots there. Also the system board, you see there Q-Logic, something, also massive memory slots there and this processor board, some dual processor board, here are the SCSI SCA connectors, backplane and quite some fans as you can see and also it looks like there is a second board, so there is one board and another second PCB down there that I will not disassemble today, but there you have it. And also later it has other CPU options, so it also has higher performance R12000 CPUs and also maybe single, yeah it also had single processor option and not yet sure what we got here, but at least it looks like quite some memory and so let's close it up again and boot it up, see what we got, we will probably install T2 another day, just here this skin there in the front is a little bit broken, a little bit hard to find the right slot to get in there also it's a little bit fragile and the plastic front panel is not really much fixed there and also not really possible to get in there while it's standing so laying it down worked better for me but again I got it for free so I will not complain about some missing plastic pieces maybe another year or so I will get them as well and by the way just realized it's manufactured in Switzerland not seen that very often so that is of course nice so power and serial connected we don't have graphic right now in there anyway so this hard power switch at the back The CD ROM needs some service. The fans are similar loud as the Octane, no surprise there. Let's see what we get on the third console. And we got something. So we got some IP27 obviously, the firmware interestingly built in 2003, 
Not sure if I ever connected the serial terminal to the octane though. So what else did we get here? Two CPUs, that is nice. So unfortunately not yet specified with the megahertz. Here this number of nodes enabled maybe related to this trailing I guess. And a nice 384 megabyte memory. Should we run diagnostics? That is funny, I thought it's two, it's three, one, three, five. Hmm. Diagnostic program not supported in this configuration. Hmm. So we got hardware inf. So two times 180. That is a little bit similar to my slower octane. My initial two times 195. So probably similar performance, I guess. Here you see already that it's similar to the Octane IOC 3 serial port. Certainly also the same SCSI, QLogic or what it was. So I may have the SCSI drive in another. Probably could. Now we boot it with print and Let's see, does it boot something from SCSI with whatever is on there? Maybe not. So it is set up to boot from disk 0, D1 is, maybe it would want the SCSI drive in the first slot, maybe. Oh no, actually, system partition, actually, it is set up to boot with Ethernet, which is also not too bad. So yeah, I guess I continue fiddling around with this new system another day. and. Obviously load T2 then and do more testing and it's certainly nice that it's similar to the Octane so the system architecture is not too far apart from supporting both in a relatively similar way also to sync kernel patches with IOC3 and things like this. I hope you enjoyed the first quick look to this Origin 200. I hope you learned something and don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all the other SGI. P3 and many more videos to come.